welcome to Hellstyles Market. My name is Arliss and I'm the owner of Hellstyles Market. Today we're going to be doing video number five on our series of food intolerances and food allergies. So just to recap, we're, we've been using our test results from Allatest, um, an allergy lab, allergy testing lab in Massachusetts. That may not be available to you in your area of the country, so you're going to use whatever test results you have to fill in your sheets. This is what the Allatest food panel looks like. If you recall, the red ones are the ones you should not be eating. They have become toxic for you. The black ones are all ones that you get to eat. So we focus on the ones you can eat. Included in your packet from Allatest is a four-day rotation. We have you photocopy that and you're going to highlight in yellow all the foods that you love off of your own test results. For today's um, samples, I'm using my test results. You'll need to be using yours. From there, we went to our rotated food chart and we just hand wrote on there all the yellow ones. So for some people, hanging this on their refrigerator just feels like a little overwhelming. And we're just trying to simplify it for you and keep it simple and easy so that you can incorporate this into your new um, diet and lifestyle. On here is what you've chosen from your favorites. For each day, you have a four day rotation. And from there, we're gonna make menus and come up with ideas of how do we take these individual foods and make them into meals and recipes. And so then we move into your weekly menu planning. And just a reminder, you're doing a four day rotation. That's best for your immune system. So we're doing a red, yellow, blue, green day. And of course, day five is another red day. We're repeating those four day blocks of rotating your foods. So then in video four, we moved into our menu planning helper. And this is like your mental brain dump. And so you were taking your foods. We made our charts according to what works for me, which was really making my menu planning simpler. So day one is chicken day and it's a red day. And you literally sit down. It's easiest when you're hungry. You literally sit down and write down. First of all, you're writing down foods you can cook without a recipe or foods that you readily have the recipe available and it's fast and easy. We're looking for simple, easy, delicious, fast and easy. And so each day you are writing down, here's your pork sheet, you've got a turkey day, day three, day four is beef day, if you can have that. And then I added an extra sheet. I don't do so well with fish, so I eat that on a limited basis. But I just happened to make lamb this weekend and was reminded again of how much I enjoy lamb so that I can add to my rotation. So going back to day one with chicken, you're just writing down the main, dish, main dishes that are easy for you to make. They're familiar. You can make them without a recipe. You're also adding um, items with your carbs from day one. Um, carb ideas, veggie ideas, fruit ideas, snacks and desserts, things that fit in with the foods that you can eat and foods that you love to eat. So today we're introducing the weekly meal plan. And so this happens to be week one. And so using these sheets of things that our family loves, these are the um, ideas that I've chosen that work with my food sensitivities and food intolerances. And so you're working with the foods you can eat for day one are chicken based. And so for breakfast, we've got a chicken sausage and an orange juice and banana smoothie. For lunch, we have a chicken salad on cabbage or kale or both with an orange peanut butter dressing. For supper, we have roasted whole chicken, rice pilaf and an herbed garlic broccoli. So if you remember, I talked about power cooking and so for me, I'm power cooking, like I'm um, roasting that whole chicken on the weekend, so it makes it easy on Monday. I've already got my chicken cooked, I've already cooked my rice pilaf, and I can do my broccoli in less than 15 minutes. So when I get home at night for supper, that's a 15 minute prep. So we've also got snacks and dessert ideas on here. So I completed this according to my four day rotation. And then I looked back over this and realized 
this is how we traditionally help our customers. And, and you can prep your meats on the weekends or do whatever you want to to fast and easy meal prep. Some of your things, because you have it written down, you can be cooking those while you're waiting, either on a microwave or an oven, a crock pot. So in other words, on Monday night, while you're making your 15 minute broccoli, you can also look ahead to see, well, what else could I prep ahead of time for um, foods that you're gonna be eating later on in the week. Make use of all of your time. Um, sometimes while I'm waiting for broccoli to steam, I can unload the dishwasher, put all the breakfast dishes in, whatever. We're just talking about making use of little blocks of time. So when I looked this over, honestly, I realized I, I really don't eat this much food. This is way, way too much food for me. But it is what you need usually if you have children at home, teenagers, um, you need to be thinking, I tend to not eat desserts. I, I really don't crave that, and I may make a dessert a month. I know that sounds maybe unique, but it's just not my craving. I'm perfectly satisfied with an orange juice and a banana smoothie, um, and so I really don't incorporate desserts really very often or even snacks into my daily eating, but that's just me. That's not everybody. Most people love snacks, and most people love desserts. So I wanted to give you a little bit... Um, another perspective. So what I wanted to show you is that when we're doing when we're doing our colored rotation days, using day one, the red day, uh, which is a chicken day. If you can have chicken, it's always on day one, the red day. And so literally to properly rotate, it's just one breakfast, one lunch, and one supper. So I have a heavy schedule, own my own business, and I want things, I want leftovers to bring for lunch to work, and I want the system to work for me and work for my lifestyle and my schedule. So I realized I took that concept and I actually rotate my food eating like this. I do one supper, one breakfast, and one lunch. Then I have a new supper this night, and then it's that, is breakfast and lunch. I'm not eating the same foods, but this is what that looks like. So you're taking that rotation and going crosswise rather than up and down. So Monday night is a green day. So let's let's go, here's beef tacos with corn chips, corn tortillas. That's also gonna include lettuce, tomatoes, um, Violife cheese, I'm using a cheese alternative. I don't do dairy. I'm not doing sour cream, but I can do salsa. So I'm making that into however I can have that, but it's also a nice meal for the family. They can pick and choose and make it however they want. So here's beef tacos, but now we move on to Tuesday lunch. I can have a hamburger patty with a green salad, and excuse me, for breakfast, a hamburger patty with a green salad, and I really do eat salad for breakfast. You feel so great. And Tuesday lunch is leftover beef tacos. So then we go back to Tuesday night. Now we're doing a new menu. It's a red day, so we're back to chicken. I'm doing stir-fried chicken over steamed rice, stir-frying with celery, broccoli, and kale. For um, So now that's Tuesday night. Wednesday morning, we're on a chicken day, chicken sausage with veggies and a rice tortilla. Wednesday lunch, here's your leftover stir-fried chicken with rice and veggies. So going crosswise instead of up and down but going crosswise where I'm doing one supper one lunch and one breakfast allows me to every day eat the leftovers from the night before now that works fantastic for me years ago in 1996 when I told that to my doctor in Las Vegas he just rolled his eyes like oh, of course you know you would tweak the system but that has just worked forever and ever it's just so simple for me to incorporate that in um, in other words, you need to make these work for you, your lifestyle, your schedule, what your timing is. So what you find is when you're working with these menu sheets, whether you're working with a full menu sheet like this or a modified menu sheet like this, between this day, this sheet, and these two, you're literally working up week after week of menus um, that are easy for you, Basically, you know how to cook them without a recipe, and they're fast, and they fit into your lifestyle. And your kids love them, and will eat them, and the whole family enjoys them. It's okay to repeat all your favorites over and over again every four days if you want. 
um, because that's why you love them. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. The purpose is to keep it simple. So what else you're doing is you're gradually getting a month's worth of menus. So you save these sheets and you save your menu planning helpers. And every time you think of a new recipe or you think of something else that you love, or it's a change of seasons, write it on this. This is your brain dump sheets. And then you hang on to these and you continue using them for uh, menu planning. So back to these sheets, gradually you're gonna have four weeks done, which will mean you don't have to keep coming up with new ideas. You just repeat those. So if you've had fresh ideas on here and you do that for week two, week three, week four, um, that's a month's worth of menus. So on week five, you're just jumping back to week one. Does that make sense that you're just repeating and repeating? What you'll find is if you hang on to these sheets and do them in pencil, that in the winter, obviously most of us are focusing on soups and stews and those kinds of warming foods, roasts, that kind of thing. And in the summer, we're all thrilled to do salads and veggies and we grill a lot. So your menus change. And eventually you may find that you wanna do a one sheet like this that's maybe a fall, winter, and another sheet that's like a spring, summer. summer um, so that you can repeat those um, foods and those meals through that season. But come fall and winter, if you've saved these, if you've started this in January, and you've saved these, come next fall, these are ready to pull out and ready to make work again. There are some foods that we eat all year long. Most families love tacos, those kinds of foods, and we eat them all year long. But some things are more exclusive to a particular season. A lot of times people feel like they need to do a lot of new recipes, and what they find is, Sometimes that just becomes a burden, and sometimes that just becomes a lot of guilt because you buy all the ingredients and then you realize, wow, what realistically what you have is about 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes to prepare supper in the evening. And it's not really, maybe if you're not a foodie and cooking isn't your favorite thing, it just becomes a burden and a stress and more guilt. So that's why I have you start with focusing on what you can cook easily, quickly, your family loves, your children will eat, and you can make it without a recipe. So we're just trying to keep it simple in the beginning while you integrate this into your um, lifestyle and your family's eating. What else you'll find is that anytime you're planning meals ahead of time, it's easy to grocery shop, you know what you're gonna cook, it's easy to use out of your pantry and out of your freezer, so ultimately you're saving money and you're using what you already have and adding a few fresh veggies or fresh ingredients from the store every week, but ultimately it greatly saves you money always to menu plan. I would say that even for someone who loves to cook and is a real foodie, adding one new recipe a week is a lot. If you have a busy schedule, a busy lifestyle, um, everybody's going here and there, adding one new recipe a week is a lot. For some, you may not even, maybe you add one new recipe a month. So make it fit for your lifestyle and your schedule. Um, one other thing I just want to mention, if you have children that are doing this and they're kind of picky eaters, um, it's best for your immune system if you do at least a two-day rotation. So they're not eating the same foods every day for lunch, every day for breakfast, every day for supper. I hope this is helpful to you. Please contact our store. Um, please contact us by email. All that information is below. Um, we'd love to help you incorporate this into your lifestyle for 2020. Let us know how we can help. Thanks for watching and have a great day.